No, 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 let's just give it a few seconds so it doesn't, it does go live. It take I'll, um, some time. I'll share it as well, let me see. Yeah, you will see it first in my personal profile and then it will appear in Warrior, so I will go and share now. It's great. Live, that's exciting. I usually do my podcast recorded, so uh, it's good to be yeah. in the it, present moment, you know? You're not doing the podcast the anymore? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just record them as opposed to do them live, you know, so it's fun. You'll tell me more about that. Yeah. Hang on one second. So how do I also share this live on, on my wall? Can you help me with that one? Um, where are you? Are you in my personal profile or in the web page? I'm on your wall. Yeah, I can see it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't appear here the share button share. below. Should be somewhere below. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, great. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so thank you for for coming today, and thank you for taking a little bit a longer day so we can adjust our schedules with the time zones. That's very kind mm -hmm. of you, actually. Mm. So what? How I came across you? There was a friend. Uh, I think it was Dylan, who mm -hmm. posted um, a a blog of yours which is called the Mapping the Progressive Counterculture at Respectative mm -hmm. Typology. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit that by now, like a few times, I have the ability to go through a whole blog. <laughs> Usually like this, like look a little bit of what it is. And then at some point, my attention is drifted towards something else. But somehow it did, it did feel like going through the majority of it, like fast reading and then seeing the types. So you'll tell me more about that. But before we go there, before we go into, into your work, I would like to know a little bit more of who is Joe right now? Like who is this person that I'm, I'm having in front of me? For whatever you feel like expression, it can be personal, it can be professional, it can be anything that is coming through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Lovely, broad question to begin with. Who am I? I am, how would I describe myself? I, I guess I guess I'm a writer. I've started writing enough now to have that as a lens through which I see the world. But really, yeah, I guess I see myself as someone um, focused towards cultivating a new type of culture in the world. And I see relationships and community as perhaps the the best way to do that or the way that I'm best positioned to help create new culture. So that's a huge area, as you can imagine. So I've kind of been coming at it from all these different angles of anthropology, psychology, philosophy, sociology, and I'm not an expert in any of that, but interested in all of it and trying to kind of create this bigger picture of a, of a new world we can live in that feels a bit more regenerative and filled with love and beauty. So how would that world like look? So if we go behind your behind your head and see through your eyes, like how is that world that you're that you're writing, I guess, also about, and that's it is inside of you that's coming through. Yeah, it uh, the the title of a book I wrote last year was called A Collective Blooming. So that's kind of imagery that I like to think of of a whole lot of different flowers at the same time, kind of blooming at once. <laughs> in different parts of the world and that being kind of like a different network that we can kind of grow and connect in together in moments like this discover what different people are doing in the same kind of frequency and vibration and yeah it's a beautiful place where i think the first thing that i see is that everyone feels like they have a sense of belonging everyone has a sense of place and a sense of connection to a group of people that support and understand them and see them for who they are. That would be kind of the, the first thing that I see in that vision of the world. That really sounds very beautiful. And hopefully we are uh, moving towards there. And I feel that every connection is helping on that practically. Um, how do you see like that in comparison to what's happening now? Like what is the culture that needs to do a step back maybe to, to allow that to grow? And how, what, what would be that, those steps? to get us there, like from your side? Mm -hmm. I, I've kind of uh, characterized that uh, the state that I see a lot of the world in now is a hollow, oppressive economic materialism. 
so that's kind of my description of what's not going right. And then the, the way that I'd kind of melt that particular state of being that a lot of people are in right now is largely through the cultivation of collectives and pods and mutual aid communities. And for me, I really see that as a first step because it's a way that we can create and kind of prototype new micro economies, new systems together, new cultural contexts, and new ways of, uh, I think we kind of need to relearn how to show up in the world and in relationship, kind of very programmed as part of this competitive capitalistic system where a lot of us will put up masks and hide a lot of our more vulnerable parts and a lot of the trauma that we're carrying uh, and sort of learning how to bring more of ourselves and bring more parts of ourselves to to relational contexts. And from there, I think we can start to build a whole new world from what unfolds when you can really see and be seen in your entirety. Thank you for that. Yes, yeah, just yesterday we were talking, actually we were, uh, we were laughing a bit about um, the, the covering that's happening even in the most conscious community sometimes, the recover, the reputting the new types of masks on. <laughs> And that's really, really interesting. How do we don't, uh, we don't need actually to engage in that anymore. How would, would we create that uh, absence of the need to, to, to hide practically? And I'm wondering if uh, that blog that attracted my attention and brought me to you uh, mm -hmm. is a way for you to start seeing these different types of I'll call them approaches, but they could also be worldviews or they could also be masks. It depends what we want, how mm -hmm. we want to call it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying that in this blog, you have practically a spectrum of three, three points. Mm -hmm. uh, almost, tell me, actually tell me more about it instead of me telling about it. I would love to hear it from you directly. Sure. <laughs> what did you yeah. claim through that and why these three in particular, mm -hmm. for example? I'll give a little backstory as to how I arrived at writing it and then I'll describe it for you. So um, I've been living in Northern Thailand for the last seven years, for most of the year. And uh, we started a community up there It's called Doc Rack, which means the flower of love. And that was the inspiration behind uh, the book that I ended up writing, A Collective Blooming. So we had a kind of lived experience of 200 people in deep, beautiful community. We made music together. We made festivals. We ran a communal cafe, permaculture farms. Yeah, it was a really profound experience. And that was the taste and vision of the kind of world that I think we could step towards. And it was a very diverse group of people uh, from maybe 60 different nationalities with all sorts of worldviews. And we got along and we, we managed to really bond in a really profound way. And I think uh, with, a, with a very broad diversity, you get a very particularly magical experience within a group of people if you can have a wide perspective um group of perspectives but after a while eventually uh the community came apart and ended up uh in quite a divisive argument in the end around social justice issues and it was largely because a lot of trauma came to the surface and it was difficult through online to keep that together and so it made sense at the time but i then spent time thinking all right, well, what are all these different perspectives? And I've spent a lot of time living in different parts of the what I'd call the progressive counterculture, which is kind of the political left, but also the more conscious Bali, Thailand type uh, spiritual community and, and everything in between. And I've noticed there's kind of like these three spectrums that I, I, I identified that were a little different in the way that people think. And the first one relates to conspiracy and generally... Uh, how people see the world through the lens of um, whether there's kind of a plan being organized by a small group of people behind it or not. Uh, the second one is to do with um, magic and the, the kind of interpretation of, of, of a literal magic in the world. And the third one is to do with social justice and their views around that. And the, the idea is not to, it, it's, it's not to suggest that any one worldview is better than the other, but just to provide a spectrum and say, hey, here, here are all the colors we're playing with. And when you combine these three paints together, you get a whole other interesting mix of colors. And I ended up with 121 different types. And the idea was to name each type in a way that would celebrate that point of view. And when someone arrives at their type, be like, yeah, that feels good to me. 
And then from that point, maybe start to understand, all right, what are these differences and how can we harmonize together and still form change-making collectives and communities while you know, respecting these different points of view? So from your point of view, um, it would be, it's, it's really interesting in the community to have different, different flavors, different of those 120 flavors, right? I'm, I, I was observing and I had, to, I had to smile when I was seeing that, that I see that you have in each one of the three categories, you have five points and the mm-hmm. fifth is never really described. Mm-hmm. Which <laughs> I was like, well, that's really interesting. I'm, I'm guessing he's doing it on purpose. I'm wondering how would, did that happen and what is the thinking behind it? Uh, what's going on with the fives? Yeah, it, that's more laziness than anything else, to be honest with you. Really, the five is defined by what is above it in these spectrums. So if you're reading it, it's um, anything that's kind of above it. So there's nothing uh, yeah, hidden in those ideas, but maybe they have other ideas that aren't included, but it's kind of defined by what it isn't, the one and the five, if you know what I mean. So I might expand the whole thing, and but that would, that would be a whole nother book. I mean, I got so into this uh, little system, but I had to kind of draw a line in the sand and be like, whoa, that's going to take a lot of work to flesh out all the different types. But I think I got it to a point where it's workable. And actually, it's been amazing to see people's feedback from it. It's, it's really been quite accurate in describing different worldviews and different perspectives, because it only takes a few minutes to find out where you are. And it's a difficult thing to do. I wonder whether you had, did you have any reactions to it where you were kind of like, oh, maybe I'd change that or I didn't like that? Because most people kind of find little parts of it a little difficult. And um, that's interesting to me. So I think that we are in a time that we are questioning almost everything anyway. So I have, I have been saying that sometimes even if something fits you, you will start questioning it just for questioning it. <laughs> so I have to admit that I usually like this. Um, I like to see myself through different frameworks, to, to mm-hmm. say it like that. So it was really fun actually to, to read through them. And from my side, my profile, let's say, would be the truth seeker, social progressive mystic. And mm. it does feel like very much like that. Uh, it was pretty clear. Like I was like, one, two, three, no, that, that, this one. So it was, it was quite fast. And that's what I actually really liked. Uh, that there was not so much of the theory. Sometimes I know that also, and that's very an interesting point that might be added at some point. Uh, I've also observed that some people are more in, like to be more intuitive. Some people like to be more analytic, for example. I am the ones that had like to be more intuitive. So I like when I see something that it talks to me directly without having to read a whole book about it, a whole, mm, yes. a whole manual about it. Um, so it worked really like that for me. Uh, the most interesting f- it for me was to see, I could almost like feel the interest of researching human archetype, different human archetypes behind it from your side. And that's why I contacted you because there are mm-hmm. sometimes that a text triggers you to get to know the author. And sometimes that is just interesting, but it doesn't trigger you to get, get to know the person. So I was like, okay, I'm wondering, who is Joe and who, who, who is, is he in his life? Who is this right strange now? person that cooked up this typing <laughs> system? And here I am. So tell me, so the book that you said was written after the experience in the community. When, when was that more or less, like in, in the timeline? Yeah, that uh, was from about 2016 to just last year, 2015. Ooh. So yeah, recent. So I was writing the book throughout the community the whole time. It took me four years to write the book. But uh, yeah, the recent- how long was the community experience? That specific specific community uh, experience? Six six years all up. Wow, pretty much. I would love to hear your opinion about that because I I have mm. been in different types of communities. We have also created one I mm. trial by ourselves, and there are some things that I like just keep observing. So I would love to hear more about um, what you believe that could be. Um, reapplied because I, I if i understood well this community is not it's not continuing right now right correct so from what you experienced and what you will see as this new type of collective what do you feel that could be reapplied in new models and what do you think it's time for us to let it go so we can go further yeah yeah that's a great question 
I obviously there's a lot. Let me let me condense to the the key areas. <sighs> Essentially, I was very optimistic and quite drunk on a vision when I started that community of what was possible. And now I feel a little bit more realistically educated around the limits of human psychology and the general level of trauma that we're all carrying right now. So for me, it was very much a political socioeconomic vision of a whole lot of collectives, you know, changing the world in a new culture. But now I think we, we need to still do that, but a little bit more humbly slow down a little bit and focus a little bit more on the internal personal development and psychological integration work. So becoming more aware of our shadows and our patterns and the next collective that I'm going to create is going to be exclusively focused on that and have that as the beginning process of bonding and trust building and growing. And it's a way also to see whether people are ready to kind of play at that level, because if they can reveal themselves and then hold other people and then hold steady in that, then they seem to be ready to kind of be a part of what these communities are because they're yeah, they're really powerful. And you've got to have a lot of trust in each, and faith in each other that you can kind of be there through some difficult challenges. So yeah, kind of a pivot towards inner work. And uh, yeah, I'm writing a, an, another book, which I think I might just release as a long series of articles actually called Becoming Community Creatures, which is going to be all the different areas and badges that uh, I think we need to work on to be ready to really show up in community. Mm, yeah, thank you for this. I think I really resonate with a lot of what you're sharing, and I kind of feel that there was a lot. There was a big movement tapping into the idea, but it was more like a, um, an enthusiastic way of approaching it, and maybe a little bit overestimating uh, the, how much we have grown towards <laughs> the new, this new culture sometimes. And I see many communities also going back into the more like inner work now to be able to start from a more correct, like a, a different base, let's say, somehow. Mm. Um, so you are now in Australia. Um, I have to admit uh, that I don't know much of what, how is the movement in Australia. So I would love to hear a little bit more of that part of the world because I don't have so much connection. I have so much more with Europe and North America for reasons that are not to me to decide, but I don't know what's happening in Southeast Asia and mostly in Australia. So how it is this, as you call it, counterculture uh, or growing in that part of the world? Yeah, it's strong and healthy and present. I haven't been particularly tapped in here because I've been spending most of my time in Thailand, but I come back each year and I get a kind of little bird's eye view of what's going on. And yeah, it's quite amazing, actually. It's quite inspiring. A lot of really awesome permaculture, farming movements happening, uh, all sorts of things going on. I mean, it depends which part of the... I tend to focus in on a particular part of the counterculture that I'm interested in, which for me, I kind of describe as the meta space. So that's people that are in, involved in what's called meta modernism, which I'm not sure if you've heard of. It's a kind of more recent political philosophy that, that kind of came out of integral, which was from the uh, philosopher Ken Wilber. So yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit niche now, but broader than that, you've got, you've got everything. You've got a big healing movement. You've got a big kind of protest movement going on. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Australia is a pretty incredible place to be. It's, uh, there's a lot of people here doing a lot of wonderful things. Very interesting. Tell me more about this niche that you are more directed to. Uh, I don't, I don't know much about it or I haven't heard it in that, in that con context. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's a particular author called Hansi Freinart, which, uh, he published a book in 2017 called the listening society. And it kind of formed a new movement called meta modernism. And the idea is that meta modernism is what comes after postmodernism, that we've kind of reached the, the end of how postmodernism can be useful. And now we're kind of evolving into a new stage that integrates the lessons of modernity and postmodernity together. So, um, yeah, it's basically a group of people that uh, like to collect many different perspectives and try to people that 
create typology systems like I wrote about, like they try and take a, a meta view on everything that's going on and try and connect things together and, and see how it fits together and see how we can kind of build networks and bridges and, and transcend some of the old blocks that seem to stop our society from progressing forward. Mm, really interesting. Um, like I can understand, yeah, it's, it's, I think we're generally moving towards this reintegration of many of the modalities that they were separated a lot during um, our current times. So that's very interesting. So right now in your own um, um, everyday life, let's say, what is more present? The book is already published. I saw that I'm seeing that in your, in your website. And where are you more focused? Like what is keeping you more um, inspired right now? Two things. One of them is a series of articles that I just finished today, a five-part series that I've been putting all of my heart and soul and energy into, and that is called Before Priests, Kings, and Bosses. And that's an exploration of hunter-gatherer culture and the lessons that we really can learn from their way of being. And then that finishes with this uh, neo-tribal declaration. So neo-tribalism is this idea that really excites me of how can we blend the lessons from then with the modern world? So I've just given all of myself to that for the last couple of months. Uh, and then the other thing I'm working on is, yeah, my own, my own health, my own shadow work, my own integration, and, and watching the unconscious patterns that keep driving me in directions that maybe I don't want to and, and kind of just pulling that back we've been in a lot of lockdown here in Australia so it's been a really good time to just yeah reflect and after watching the community that I was part of fall apart I saw oh, okay yeah I had my own my own part my own psychology was involved in that as well so yeah really learning about ah, relaxation and self-hypnosis and yeah I've been on that journey for a long time but it just keeps getting more and more interesting but yeah healing I, I can imagine that. And I would love to hear a little bit of how did your journey started on that direction and how much do you feel right, right, right now that it is part or connected also to your um, work, earthly work, let's say. So yeah, for me, it's always like nice to say where how much somebody has been uh, wanting or trying or achieving to integrate it into the action. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, I am grateful to say that everything feels like it fits together really nicely. I feel like the healing that I feel I need to do, I was uh, diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome when I was 17. So I've been on a pretty epic healing journey ever since. And that's what kind of sent me down the spiritual path in my 20s as well. So for a while there, they were two different roads. There was a bit like, you know, how do I change the world and create entrepreneurial change-making communities? And then how do I, you know, work on myself? But just lately, I really see how they're, they're coming together. And that's, uh, that's actually really beautiful that I can see that slowing down and embodying the kind of energy that I'm aiming towards is really the quickest way to get us there. As a, as a culture as well so yeah that, that penny has slowly been dropping but i still have these moments of you know all the patterns coming through intergenerational trauma and all sorts of weird and wonderful emanations from the you know collective unconscious coming up as well so it keeps me on my toes thank you for that i i i keep observing that it has been for many of us this this journey through saving the world towards Let's just start from the from where we are right now, meaning in that body also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I totally resonate with that. Uh, in your in your day to day life right now, um, mm -hmm. how do you balance? How do you approach this? Um, yeah, how do you balance practically the mm -hmm. the part of you being a spiritual being and the part of you being a human? <laughs> Being somebody who needs to eat and talk and, and operate and have uh, uh, relationships. How do the two um, blend together? Yeah. For a long time, I've been very flowy, very intuitive, very doing what feels right at the right time. But lately, I've been going for balance through discipline 
and really experimenting with much more structure of like, I make sure I go into nature every day. I make sure I meditate every day. I make sure I play some music uh, every day. And sometimes I fail in those departments, but generally like, yeah, that's been a really interesting thing for me over the last year of, of balance through discipline of like, you're doing this at that time and that's going to happen. And it's working for me. I guess each of us have different medicine that we need in different moments. But for me, that's how I'm keeping a sense of balance. But it's hard, you know, as a writer and a thinker, spend a lot of time in the computer and a lot of time in the brain. And it's beautiful. It's, I mean, it's a, I'd say it's a cosmic form of creation. That it's, I've just flooded with inspiration. I have about 40 different articles that I feel I want to write and explore. But yeah, you do have to kind of like make sure I dance a little bit and 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 massage myself and yeah so constantly moving in between the different the different parts of myself but um i have a lovely relationship with my partner and we cuddle each other a lot so that helps me stay grounded in my body and it's a nice kind of physicality that allows me to soar through the more mental space which i tend to want to kind of stay in as, as long as i can mm, thank you for that yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful uh, reminder also. And I have to admit that I do resonate personally a lot so from, from the flow to the discipline, but without the interesting part, it's not to re recreate a structure that we don't want to be in, but rather be in a, in a more conscious, consciously chosen structure, let's say. Yeah. Uh, which is, but it, it is an interesting journey and also how to still allow flow and spontaneity to be present but not to be taking you away from where you want this boat to go, let's say. Uh, it is a very interesting uh, balance in general. So as we're going to go towards uh, closing, uh, I would like to ask you two questions that I ask all of, my, all of my guests in the end. And these are, you might have described already the first. So what is the unique gift that you feel that you're bringing to the world? as in this specific re reincarnation and the second one is what kind of, of, support, of support you would need right now to go further in your own um path so you can start from whatever you you feel like yeah i think the gift that i'm bringing what i what i feel like i'm here to do what i'm going to dedicate my life towards is cultivating new types of community space that allows us to really feel full and allows us to kind of tap back into that innate instinctual belonging that I think we had for millions of years in tribal structures that we've lost that really defines us as humans. So that's leading me towards better understanding how to hold people's pain and trauma and psychology and uh, bring that forward so that they can get in touch with their creativity and expression. So that's kind of the, the path. And then the support that I need, that's interesting. I struggle a little bit more with that one. I'm kind of like, no, I'm good. I got, you know, no, I'll take care of it all. And I've got it taken care of. But I guess, yeah, what is it right now? I think once I'm ready to set up the next round of this kind of community, I'm going to want to reach out to these people that are on that wavelength and looking for that same experience. And so a lot of the work that I'm doing now is preparing kind of like breadcrumb so that in that moment, people can understand where I'm coming from through the writing and, and, and get up to speed and participate. So I guess anyone that feels resonant in this moment with the message or what I'm sharing, stay in touch and, and hopefully we can co-create something together, which may have an online component in, in the years to come. Tell me a little bit, before we go, tell me a little bit more about how do you, if you have already a more clear idea or envisioning of, of that next round of community that you are talking about, if you have a location, meaning if you have a counter in your mind, if there is something that is already there, or if not, no problem at all also, just wanted to see where you are more or less. In the yeah, place. I do have a vision of what that looks like. I... I see in the future us really f benefiting from having an in-person community that we're a part of wherever we're living, maybe multiple locations or one and really nurturing that. And then another kind of meta online community that's much larger, but can have, you know, smaller segments within it that I think with, with virtual reality and some of the other 
tools we're going to have for connecting online. We're going to be able to have much more intense and full bodied experience. And it's difficult to find a group of people that really resonate with your same values and your ideas where you're living. That's, that's not always easy, but it's much easier to find them on the web. So the idea for me is to create really deep and powerful online communities where we can start to, to, to do the, the work together, where we can start to grow together, where we can start to create, support each other's creative process, psychological process, hold space for each other and just enjoy each other. Basically there's, I'm just meeting so many amazing people of this last year. I've been podcasting and, and connecting in with people such as yourself and yeah, there's so much hope and so much optimism. There's just a lot of beautiful amazing people giving their all to making the world a better place. And so being in content, constant contact with them through a community that grows over time, it, it feels like a really a potent thing that I think I'm going to put together at some stage. Mm, I, I, I have to admit that I feel, I feel you very much on that sometimes. It's, it seems that the, the people that you are able to connect because of the online capacity and the people that are in your community can be in two different speeds in a way, which is really interesting also to be between the two and kind of like have both uh, perspectives. And to tell you the truth, that's practically why we have started the, uh, the Warriors tribe to, tell, to be able to connect with people. Also a niche as always, right? It's like, it's entrepreneurs, it's spiritual entrepreneurs, meaning people who are creating from their spiritual guidance because the spiritual entrepreneur's word <laughs> it's having a lot of patience sometimes so um, i will be very happy if you if you join us at any moment we have some open space we have some more uh, in-person spaces of course yeah. um, but the, uh, uh, that we will talk more offline uh, just okay. for now i just wanted to thank you a lot for being together with us i'm really glad to get to meet you through this live interview and i wanted to see if there's anything else that What's to be expressed before we go? Hmm. Ah, just appreciation of connecting with you. It feels really nice. I really enjoy the energy and presence you bring to the conversation and the, uh, the playful spirit and the warmth. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It was really a pleasure to, to get this interview with you. So we will, I will stop the Facebook Live. We will continue on the same Zoom and we will say the same, uh, the rest out. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm just stopping the yeah, I think the live stopped.